Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm David. I'm here at my parents. It was meant to be a week-long visit, but it's just turned into a weekend, uh, so I didn't manage to get as much done as I had hoped. However, in today's video, I'll be showing you how I ballasted and weathered the track, how I built this embankment out of foam, and then some great scenic detail on building this field. Okay then, so you join me halfway through the painting the backseat video and also halfway through the adding lighting video. <laughs> so I'm doing all sorts at the moment, but for now it's time to start working on the scenery uh, for this section. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is getting this road put into place because that kind of keys into where all the embankments either side need to go uh, and where the rest of the scenery needs to be placed. But you'll notice there is a gaping hole there at the moment. So what I've done is I've got a cardboard cutout, uh, cut it to shape, and then I've spent some time cutting a piece of plywood. There we go. You can see that sits perfectly in place. I've had to do quite a lot of sanding as this was 12mm ply, and I think it was probably only about 9mm at the front, but I couldn't find a piece of 9mm ply. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this in place, nice and solid. Uh, might put a screw or two into it as well. Uh, and then it's time to start putting in all the retaining walls around this embankment before getting down to putting some foam and filling in the scenery. Okay, so that's now screwed in place and glued as well, so the glue's drying up. I will be coming back with some sort of filler in this area and sanding this smooth, but that's for a slightly later uh, date or even later on today, probably. Now, if you remember, there should be a retaining wall along here. Um, I did have one 3D printed, but I ended up breaking that a couple of times and gluing it back together, and it just didn't look great. So I've bought a wheels kit. So I assembled this <laughs> whilst I was away at work. Just got most of it assembled. So I just need to notch this corner a bit more, but this is going to be installed in place there. And then to go underneath the bridge itself, I've got the Wills uh, bridge abutment kit. Okay then, so it's a day later, I think, since the last clip, and I've got that all painted and glued in. So you can see we've got the Wills arch retaining wall along there. Then my custom made bridge, this handrail section, just slots in nicely. I think I need to reprint it though, because uh, it did mess up at just at this end here. So I'll probably reprint this, and obviously there needs to be one on the other side as well. Here we've got a Wills bridge abutment kit. So you can see we've just got the sloped wall there. Then the two walls just underneath. Then on the back, there's another bit of retaining wall. Come round here. And that's just going to be for this person's house. Uh, I've not done this back corner yet, but I'm not actually quite sure how it's going to work. Obviously, I need to have embankment up there for the signal to be on. Uh, what I do know is there's at least going to be a post here to match these. Then some sort of wall retaining the embankment. I'm not sure if it's going to be a wall straight across here or just a sloped wall, or if this is all going to be overflowing embankment. Uh, my idea is along here should be trees anyway, so that might cover it up, whatever I do there. Um, but anyway, so I've got that painted up, weathered up. I do need to come along and blend some stuff in. So see along here, there's a seam that'll need some work. And there's a few other seams, but I just wanted to get that basically in so we could start looking at forming the landscape. Okay, so I've got the foam gluing up in here uh, and that's gonna be hot wire foam cut into shape before we do the scenery. Uh, now behind the houses, just because I've got a lot of plastic going on around here and there's also quite some small little mounds and slopes going in. So I just use the old fashioned method. So I've screwed up some newspaper, <laughs> just uh, the houses there are just pulled out of the way, but I've screwed up some newspaper behind and I'm just gonna come along and probably paper mache a little bit and then we'll come back and put sculpt mold on top at the same time as I sculpt mold this side. Okay then, so that foam is in and to shape. I did try and film the hot wire phone cutter, then my phone died. Uh, so I went and put my phone on charge, and by the time it was charged again, the phone was cut to shape. And then if we look over there, all I've done is screwed up some newspaper, put some newspaper down with some wood glue and water. Then on top of that, there's some brown paper. 
you can see the house looks a bit skew if but that's it's just not on its base properly so the next stage then is going to be to cover this hillside in sculptor mold so if you've not seen it before i've used it in previous videos it's a paper mulch and plaster mix plaster of paris and i'm literally just going to get it small handfuls at a time and smear it onto the surface now some people do recommend maybe putting some wood glue down on top of the foam uh, before you put the sculpt mold down or even putting plaster cloth down on top but I have found in the past just doing this works perfectly fine. Okay so it's the evening now this has started to set up and you can see all you do with the sculpt mold is once you've layered it on is you can smooth it out by wetting your hand and then rubbing it along you get a nice smooth surface. So I've built up the field a little bit here. You can see I've created this flat edge and built it up just so I get more space for the horse field at the front. You can see I've come along here as well and I actually sculpted molded over onto the next board and then I've cut through it and that should allow it to line up perfectly. I have wiped the fascia all along uh, so it's mostly uh, black paint at the moment but once I've finished with the scenery on here I will be giving this another coat anyway. Look over at the other side as well, I have put sculpt mould on that hill there and it's all starting to come together. You see the dent in that hill? That's actually for the large tree to fit in. So if I grab it, this is a Hornby Scaledale tree that I've just re-scattered. You would have seen that in the last video. And that's got a tree house in. And then down here we've got, again I think it's an NPC Enix tree. And I've actually twisted that about a bit put some new scatter on and I think it's looking quite good. So I think for the next stage, um, my what I thought was going to be a week here at my parents' house working on the railway has been cut short to only a couple of days, uh, actually a long weekend, because uh, I've got to get back to work quicker than I thought. So I won't have time necessarily to do everything I wanted to do. I had hoped to finish this board uh, this week and I do actually have most of the materials to do it. But anyway, what I think I'm going to do this evening is get some of the main jobs done. So in my eyes, that's going to be to paint this field, because I really want to get this horse field done. It's a scene I've been thinking about in my head for a while. Also going to start building up scenery over here. I'm going to get some trees in behind the house. Maybe have a look in the gardens, but there's lots of detail I want to add to the gardens. Uh, so that might be in another video. And that leaves, for the next time I visit, probably going to add the road and all the scenery that's back here as well as finishing off the back scene. For now though what I think I'm going to do is paint the sculpt mold brown, paint the track and then I should be able to get some ballast onto the track. Okay so I've given it all a quick coat of brown paint. I've also then come along and just airbrushed the track with some sleeper grime paint then I've also come along and just cleaned off the top of the rails. I've used a hairdryer just to speed up the drying process a little bit. And I have left it for a while to dry. And now it's time to ballast. So today I'm going to be using my favoured Woodland Scenics Fine Ballast. Today I've gone for a light grey. I believe it's the same colour I used on the other board. Um, and it just weathers up. If you use light grey, you can kind of paint it any colour you want. Today I'm going to be using a few different methods to actually apply it. So I've got this 3D printed ballast spreader that I downloaded off the internet and 3D printed years ago on one of my older 3D printers. So I'm just going to fill this up with ballast and then run it along. And then also today I'm going to try out the Bex Hill West uh, ballast vacuum, I think that's what he calls it. I bought it for about £10 from his online shop. I'm all for small businesses, particularly if it's supporting another YouTuber. So we'll see if that works. The idea is, I believe, that it hoovers up all the excess ballast uh, without hoovering the ballast that's in between the sleepers. So we'll see how it works. Just giving it a couple of runs and it has come out very very well. Probably some technique to use uh, to get it to work slightly better. You can see some places it's worked really really well and others I think I just changed my angle with it slightly. But no I'm really impressed and I'll definitely be using this going forward. So what I'm going to do now is uh, touch up the ballast by hand the same way I always do. So plenty of 
brushes and etc filling in the ballast and then it'll be time to apply the glue. Okay, so it's the next day and the ballast is pretty much dry. I did have to whack on a heater underneath uh, just to dry it out properly. Now I did use a uh, wooden scenic scenic cement, which I normally wouldn't recommend. I just had some in stock um, because I was trying it out for some scenery work and it seems to have done quite well. Uh, so I, I can't really tell the difference, to be honest, between using wood glue and water and using this wooden scenic stuff. So what I'm going to do is weather the track, but before I do that, I'm just going to run a knife through the ballast along here, or maybe even a multi-tool, uh, just to make sure that it's all clear. That'll be time to airbrush the track. Okay then, so as you can see, all of that is weathered. Doesn't quite match up with the other board, but once I've got the other board's lighting rig in place, I'll be able to see the colour better and I can airbrush them. Although I think I am happier with the colour of this board, if I'm honest. So you see there's a few things I've done. I've done a nice black splodge along this track on the way up to that signal, because that's where there'd be lots of trains sat waiting. Then over here you can see the concrete sleeper track in the back, Try to leave the ballast a very slightly different colour. Might come back and change that even more. See, there is a little bit of variation from this side to this side, but it's not that uh, obvious. As for the concrete sleeper track, I weather it in the exact same way that I'd weather my wooden sleeper track, except I then used my finger to rub the paint off the surface of the concrete sleepers, then came along with a light brown dusting with the airbrush just to top it all off. Okay then, so the ballast has had plenty more time to dry, uh, and the paint has dried. I have been weathering some coaches and locos, or what, just the one loco. Uh, but anyway, it's now time to start the scenery. So the first stage is going to be putting the field in down at the front. So I've got two options for mats, because I do want to try a mat for this, just to see how it works out. I've got this short, tufty summer grass with some dead spots in it and I've got the same thing but slightly longer and it's also got some weeds in it which I think I might go for it does look quite good okay so I've not actually used this type of mat before I've used some of the really uh, cheap ones you used to be able to get but I've never tried a nice one so I'm not quite sure which way I want to do it so what I think I'm going to do is place it down flat edge along the front of the layout and then just start ripping it. Okay, so that's just ripped into place. I might tear this edge a little bit as well. Now the reason I'm tearing it is just to make it look as natural as possible. Okay, then I'm just gonna come back and glue it down. I'm very impressed so far literally stuck straight down and that looks like a nice overgrown field to me so yeah probably could do with some more glue at the edges but it's conformed to the landscape quite well quite flexible and again yeah just instant scenery so if you're not looking to put all the uh, all the work in to do what i'm about to do on this embankment then yeah by all means these grass mats are really good and i'll put the name on the screen right now
Okay, so now that grass mat's down in the field, it's time to start on this embankment. And for this, I'm just gonna put down some wood glue first, followed up by some dry earth scatter from War World Scenics. I would ordinarily just get soil from the garden, uh, but again, this is a flying visit. So yeah, I thought I'd cheat and just buy myself some pre-made soil scatter. Uh, I'm also at the same time just gonna be working in that area. In the background, I'll put some soil down over there as well. Okay, so whilst this dries out a little bit before I put the static grass on, I think it's time to put a hedge along this pavement here. So I'm gonna use the same method I've used before. In fact, I am actually recycling some old material. So this is just horse hair, rubberized horse hair. You can buy it on eBay, you can buy it from different scenery suppliers. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is cover it in spray glue, probably some uh, static grass layering spray, or some hairspray would work just fine. Uh, and then I'm gonna cover it in wooden scenics, fine turf, and then we can glue it along here. And then once it's glued in place, I'll cut it into shape. Okay, so we've got a nice little hedge and I've got the heater on again, so this has actually started to dry out quite well. So I think it's time to try out my new static grass applicator. Okay, so after years of using my own homemade static grass applicator, finally decided to go and buy one. Went for WWS, um, just because I've seen really good things with their products. I decided to go for the kit as well, just to try out their uh, basing glue and layering spray. And they've also included some other random static grasses there to add to my collection. So yeah, first time using a professional one that isn't just something I've 3D printed or put together from a fly swap. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so you'll notice that I've put a bit of cardboard on the track and I've also put a bit of tape down the front of the fascia. Now this is just really to try and prevent any static grass from going where I don't want it to go. You don't want to put glue everywhere, as you want to start this in layers. Okay, so it's a little while later. I didn't need to wait that long for it to dry, but what I've just done is build the second lighting rig. Now, the only reason I've done that is so I can see how the lighting works here and I can blend these two bits of grass together. I've also been up into the loft and got down my normal grass, which is WWS Autumn 2 mil and WWS Muddy 6 mil and I'll be combining that with some of the grasses that came in the kit to finish this off. Not sure how much I'm gonna film, because uh, I'm tight on time now, but I'm just gonna keep using this layering spray, spraying on the layering spray, and then putting down the static grass. Okay, so that's just a layer of four millimeter autumn down. Then I've come along with my airbrush and just drifted over some concrete color, and that makes a nice sort of straw colored grass in there. Now we're just gonna tuft it all up. Okay, so just then we had some six millimeter muddy, followed by some, I believe it was four millimeter dead, particularly in this line here along where the fence is gonna go. And then again, just a, a light dusting of concrete colored uh, airbrush, just to lighten up that grass, make it look dead. And I think it's starting to look quite good. I think I'm gonna have to come back and do some static grass over there in a minute, just to bring it up to this standard. Okay, so I think I'm gonna blend in uh, this edge along here and also fill in just some little bits and bobs. Uh, and to do that, I think I'm gonna use some two millimeter autumn, which I believe I've got here somewhere, uh, just to, again, feather in the edge. And I might put a couple bits of grass in between the tracks there. 
Okay, so I got that all put in, and then I've just come along with the airbrush. Literally just misted over some uh, sleeper grime, just to blend it in. Any grass that's growing next to the track won't be very vibrant at all. Okay, then I think before I do anything else, it's time to make the fence or just plant the fence. So what I've actually got is something I've 3D printed myself. You can get these posts from Ratio, but I thought I'd save myself about a tenner. So I've 3D printed just some concrete fence posts. And all I'm gonna do is equally space these out Okay, so they're all glued in. I've just put a drop of super glue under each one uh, in the time lapse. I didn't glue them, but I pinned them all in, pulled them out, put a drop of super glue. In the middle here, we've got a special post. This is a tensioning post. They're meant to be one every 100, so it's just in the middle of my fence here. And there should really be a, a tensioning post in the corner, uh, but you wouldn't see it there, so I thought, why not just move it to somewhere where you can see it? Okay, so now the posts are in it would be time to add some wires. Now in the past, I've used uh, cotton, as in sewing cotton, uh, but today I've bought myself some Easy Line, which is a nice stretchy wire material used for making fences and telephone wires, etc. But before I do that, there's a few more things I want to glue in place uh, that could risk getting glue onto the wires. So I'm gonna start by putting a bit of glue over here. And we're just going to sprinkle on some earth texture underneath where the tree will be. And my favourite thing, a little dab of sleeper grime. Okay, the next thing I'm going to add is some wooden scenics fine turf. So I'm just going to scatter this on sparingly and create patches of bushes. Okay, so I got that fence installed. It's only got the four wires on it, but you can imagine there's a fifth down in the grass. They start closer together and get further apart, as is prototypical, so that small animals can't get through the bottom and then at the top. You're just protecting against larger stuff. So it's time to start working our way up. We've done the grass, we've done the little shrubs. It's time to start adding bushes and things like this. See if we come over here, I've had a little bit of sea foam and then I've also scattered on some purple flowers. Very, very subtle. I think down here at the end of this fence is crying out for maybe some shrubs or bushes. I might add a slightly bigger bush just here. Okay, so with those shrubs and bushes installed, just there and there, one over there as well, and this small one on the fence, it's now time to install the feature tree. What I'm gonna do is a healthy dose of wood glue. We get some earth scatter and just sprinkle it on top. Now time for the tree itself. So I might put some more glue just on here. And then for a finishing touch, I'm just gonna add A little horse, 3D printed and hand painted by myself. Okay, so I thought through this video I could show you uh, some of my new purchases. Okay, so this is the first new purchase of mine. It's a Backman 5MT, pre-weathered on eBay. Uh, and with faulty DCC sound, uh, obviously it doesn't turn on when the engine's running, but when it stops you get this nice steam sound. And I can also play a whistle. But this loco won't take a lot of work, literally all I've got to do is replace that with a lock sound V5 and it's ready and ready to go. Already fitted some KD couplings and again it's beautifully weathered already. Now you can see just in the cab there, I fit a driver figure. So yeah, a new sound chip and this one will be ready to go.
and this is my second new purchase, a lovely Dapol 61XX. I've literally just weathered this so the wheels aren't clean yet, uh, so I can't actually show it you running, and I probably won't get the wheels clean before I leave because my train is in about an hour and a half's time uh, to go back to work. But yeah, really, really happy with this. DCC Sound fitted it with a Loxound V5. It sounds really good. I can show you some of the sounds. She just won't run, uh, not properly anyway. So yeah, works really well. I can assure you this one does run with real sounds and everything, but that'll have to wait for the next video. Okay guys, thank you very, very much for watching. Really, really happy with how this scene has come out. It's looking really, really good. And then we've started to spread the scenery further down this way, and it's all coming together. So I hope you join me next time. The next time I do a proper layout update uh, will be the next time I visit, which hopefully isn't terribly long from now. Uh, however, I do have a bank of videos, so I don't know what order I'm going to put them out in. I've got a video on the uh, first edge of the back scene, which I might wait until I've painted the rest of the back scene to upload. I've got a video on the lighting, I've got a video on weathering some locos in rolling stock. So yeah, it depends which order I upload them all in as to which way you see them. But I really look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.